Particle filters I already did last time. Does everyone remember why particle filters are so awesome and why you should feel so superior to those folks over in electrical engineering who just know about Kalman filtering, don't know about particles? Non-parametric. Yeah. Non-parametric. Non-parametric. Um, uh, normal people, when they think probability distribution, they think something like this. Right? Which is like a Gaussian, which is parameterized by mean and variance. It has these parameters. It has a, an analytic form, a closed form, an equation you write down. And the equation has these two parameters, like mean and variance. And if you have the, the 2D case, um, oh boy. Uh -oh. <laughs> um, let's just draw ellipsoids <laughs> there. If you've got a 2D Gaussian, it looks like that, <laughs> kind of. <laughs> and uh, and if, if I'm in the middle of the Sonora Desert and I'm wondering where my robot is, like maybe that's OK, um, except maybe not. The Sonora Desert, I think, contains the Grand Canyon, which like, if you go in, you don't come out. So there's, like, it's like, whoa, the, there's this probability gets really messed up there. We saw a video. We saw Sebastian. We need, can we watch Sebastian's video again? The, do you remember the one with, the, with the, the particle filtering? Can we watch that one again? I love that one so much. Um, it's, uh, it shows you how um, that for, for in the real world, oh, two minutes. Give me a break. Um, it says two on it, which means I must have another one in the cache somewhere. Oh, 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 oh. There. There. So right. So this is a pro these particles are little bits of, of probability mass, and you can see they're totally not in Gaussian clumps. They're 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 in a, in a big Gaussian. They're not even a mixture of Gaussians. They're, they're they're just very interesting shapes. Like there's never any probability inside the walls, for example. Um, there's no probability in the walls. No. Oh, those lines are the sensor readings. The red dots are the particles. Um, the, this is the, the sensors, the laser scanner. Yeah, next year when we watch this video, it'll be from the UNH robot. Uh, so, so particle filters are awesome because they're non-parametric, and that's why we can hold our heads up high as we walk down the halls, even though we don't know any linear algebra. Um, why do they suck? You always have to know positive. This is part of being a good scientists and engineers to know the advantages and the disadvantages. What's the disadvantage of particle filters? They're dead simple to program, so that's not a disadvantage. Like, yeah. So what's, what's the problem with particle filters? And I said this last time. <sighs> what's the problem with particle filters? No, you don't really have to know the math. You just follow the slide. <laughs> um, so non-parametric, they're awesome. They're totally scalable. They're anytime. But um, in order to be able to believe anything, you have to have some probability mass there. So if um, that's the great thing about a Gaussian, is it's actually non-zero everywhere. I don't know if you guys noticed, but the Gaussian's like, whoosh, whoosh, and if you follow the tail out. You're like, whoosh, 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 and it's still above zero. Like you could keep going, and it's still it's teeny weeny weeny weensy, but it's not zero. Whereas particle filters, like if there ain't a particle there, it's zero. So um, there's this thing called the kidnapped robot problem, where you uh, your robot's going along, and then you like turn it off, and then you take it somewhere, and then you turn it on the next day, and it's like, ah, where am I? It's called the kidnap robot problem. And like there are no particles at the new location. They're like all back at the old location. So the robot cannot 
localize. It cannot learn that it is where the new location is because there are zero, there's zero particles there. So that sucks. Um, however, so that's this particular kidnapping is easy to solve because what happens is in your motion model here, you just reserve like 1% of the probability to like, well, I was in S1 and now S2 could be anywhere. Like you have like with some, with some small probability, like you teleport to random places. So you get, you're throwing particles out all over the world and they probably won't be consistent with your sensor readings, with your evidence. And so they'll get very low weight. So they're very likely to disappear here. But you do end up like, you know, you throw some particles to somewhere and that lets you cope with kidnapping. There's some probability that you will recover at every time step. Um, the big problem is with high dimensions. So if, you're, if your state space is very high dimensional, then you just can't have enough particles in order to put some everywhere. I mean, a good robot arm has seven degrees of freedom. So that's a lot. There's seven, it's a seven dimensional space. And to have to sprinkle a little bit of probability everywhere, um, like if you want to cover each, let's say you have you want 10, you want to, you want a particle, at least 10 particles along every dimension. That's 10 to the seventh particles right there, just to like get basic coverage. 10 to the seven is what, 10 million particles? So that is gonna be slow. So, so that's too bad. So they don't cope well with high dimensional spaces. So that's particle filtering again.